Can you imagine an industry where everyone, including the government, thinks that you make so much money that they attack you? Meanwhile, you're broke as a joke and ready to choke. I mean, you, you, you make, you're literally struggling living paycheck to paycheck, if even that. Well, that's exactly what's happening with real estate agents right now. There's plenty of studies out there. I'll show you some numbers here in a second that shows that the average real estate agent is literally broke is literally broke, the top 1% of agents. Now, if you're in the top 1%, right, if you're in that upper echelon, which is the very few in the industry, yeah, you're doing great. You're making a lot of money. But guess what? You've been in the business a long time, and it's taken you years and years and years to build your business to that point. You, in fact, were at one time one of the broke agents. Yes, that was me. I was a broke agent for a long, long, long time until I built my business up to the point where I could actually make a decent income. This is not an easy business, but yet we're getting attacked and everybody's trying to put pressure on us. Like, And the thing is, is people just don't realize how much value we provide. And this is going to be the greatest social experiment that we've ever seen, where we literally force buyers. We force buyers to go straight to the listing agent and have no representation, and it's not going to end well. But hey, we'll just let it play out the way it plays out, and we'll see what happens because at the end of the day, there's nothing we can do about it. In this video, I want to share with you the three reasons why real estate agents are broke, and I want to tell you the one thing that you can do to prevent yourself from being a broke agent. I mean, this is going to be no fluff here. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. Why? Because that's that's how I roll. Let's dive in here to this article from Housing Wire. Incomes are rising for experienced realtors, but falling for younger ones. Okay, and our data shows that more experienced agents are benefiting from their longstanding relationships with past clients. All right, so here are the numbers. The median gross income for realtors with at least 16 years, so 16 years of experience, rose from 80,000 in 2022 to 92.5 in 2023. So can you imagine being in a business for 16 years and you're making under 100,000? Now, this is, this is gross. Now, if you let's let's you know let's let's take some expenses out like broker splits. You're sitting on I think the number when they took the broker splits out was somewhere in the fifty something thousand range. So you got fifty something thousand dollars. Then you pay taxes. What what, what you living on, man? What how you living right now? Right, you're not living. And th this is what I'm talking about right here. Now let's go further, but for realtors as a whole, so the 16 year and up agents, their income rose from, um, from 80,000 to 92.5, but realtors as a whole, the median gross income fell from 56 in 2022 to 55.8 in 2023. So what does that tell you? The, 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 the people that are you know less than 16 years in the industry, they're making less and the people more than 16 years are making more. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense, but you still got to sit here and think. You've been in the business 16 years and you, you make an under 100,000. This is interesting. The typical realtor earned 20% of their business from repeat clients. All right, in 2023, that's down from 27% in 2022. But agents with at least 16 years of experience got 42% of their business from repeat clients in 2023. When I got my business to a million dollars a year in 2017, I never prospected another day in my life, continued to make a million every year just off repeats, referrals, and referrals of referrals. Okay, that's how you get there and stay there is having a system in place where nobody ever forgets who you are. I mean, that's the, that's probably, uh, that's not one of my three reasons why uh, agents, you know, are broke, but this is one reason why agents stay stuck at 200,000 a year for their entire career, never get to three, four, 500, or even a million dollars because they, everybody, people they talked to five years ago, don't even remember who they are now, or even in 10 years. Like you need a system where everyone remembers who you are. My system's a weekly email, right? I'll put a link in the description uh, for that. And if you want to go and just 
copy my template, like use my template and do your weekly email. It's not hard, but you put people in there. They never forget you. And 42% of agents that were 16 years or more in the business, 42% uh, of their business came from repeat and referrals. You no. Know, and, and as far as agents quitting the business, you know, uh, this year, I mean, here's an article here. Um, it showed that uh, in February, I mean, I'm sorry, Mar in April, April, the, the NAR membership got down to 1.59,000, 1, 1,509,195. Okay. Um, that's higher than the numbers reported in February and March. So, but it was 2% lower than a year ago. Okay. Well, the thing is, is people are thinking agents are going to be leaving the business, leaving the business, leaving the business. And yeah, we're down 2% year over year. But this is what you got to think about right here. In the midst of these interest rate hike and lower uh, transactions that started back in March of 2022, right? We, we, in, we in July of 24 now, uh, we had a, a jan normally January, uh, we have a lower um, you know, membership count due to that's when dues come, come into effect in January. We take the agents who basically quit the business a year ago, but it's just now coming to fruition because their dues are owed and they didn't pay their dues. So boom, they get taken out of the membership. So January is normally a, a down month. February was a down month this year, but guess what? March was higher than February and April was higher than March. So it did, but now we're gaining. And I think we'll gain through the year like we always do. And then we'll have another dip in January. And I do think the NAR settlement situation could have a little of, a, of effect on that. We'll see how that goes come 2025. But, but hey, like agents are, you know, we're bringing new agents into the industry, even in the midst of sales that were down to 2000 or 1994 numbers. Nevertheless, I want you to think about this. If you're a struggling agent, all right. If you're a struggling agent, I want you to look at this. Right. Um, this is from um, Resi Club. And this was this was information from Zillow. How strain housing affordability across the nation. Right. Zillow, while roughly uh, seven point nine million non homeowner families so families who live in a house that don't own that house. OK, seven point nine million of them in the U.S. are income mortgage ready across the country income mortgage ready which means they can they 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 would af they can afford a mortgage in this environment of prices and interest rates 7.9 million families are sitting on the sideline and maybe they they continue renting for a while but there's going to be a number of those there's a there's a number of those that want to own and can own they could pull the trigger right now now we've already seen I'll show you right here. The Federal uh, Reserve pal says um, uh, more good data could open the door for interest rate cuts. We're getting closer and closer to those cuts. Now, they said they were going to cut some earlier this year. You know, like last year, they said, oh, we're going to cut some in 2024. Well, that didn't happen. Right. And now they're saying it, you know, it, it's coming down the pipe. You know, they could change their mind again. Absolutely. But how long can this last? It's not going to last forever. And Lawrence Yoon, the chief economist for NAR, came out and said that he believes that 6% is going to be the new norm. Right now, we're hovering around 7%. When we get to 6%, and even Barbara Corcoran, she said it's going to be the magic number where you're going to see people come out the woodworks and we're going to see a nice, eight to 10% increase in prices. Those are the words of Barbara Corcoran. This is all speculation, but nevertheless, you've got 7 million families that can afford a home right now in this market who don't own a home. That's pent up demand. Look at what all else that Zillow said. 2000, and the nation's housing defect rose to 4.5 million in 2022. What does that mean? It means that we're short 4.5 million homes based on the amount of families that are being created in the U.S. And that's up from 4.3 million the year before. So, yeah, and, and in 2007, right, we had the strongest number in 2023, right? Last year, we had the strongest number of, of homes being built and completed in the U.S. since 2007, Right. 2023 was the largest year since 2007. But those 1.4 million homes aren't enough to even make a meaningful dent in the nation's existing housing shortage due to the increase in number of families. 
So this is what I want you to understand. If you're a struggling agent, you're looking at this market, you're like, ah, oh, I'm just going to go through the three reasons why uh, real estate agents are broke. And I want you to really take this to heart. And if you're serious about real estate, I want you to stand up and say, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm ready to get down. I'm ready to make this happen. I don't care what I got to do. I'm going to do it. And that's the way you got to be. But what I'm getting at is that there's so much pent up demand with new families that can't afford. Now, what's going to happen when that interest rate goes from seven to six? That 7.9 million people, uh, families that can afford a home, that's going to increase. And people are going to come out the woodworks, not to mention the trade up sellers. Nobody's talking about that. The trade up sellers who literally, there's people who hate the home that they're in, right? They, they, they need a bigger house. They're tired of where they're, they've been locked in for years. Normally by now they would have already, you know, moved again and stuff, but because they're locked in on those historic interest rates, they've been sitting tight. They've been sitting tight. Well, as the interest rate gets back down to six, there's a lot of those that are going to release. They're going to release. They're going to go because they just can't do it anymore. Um, and we're going to see a surge of inventory. We're going to see a surge of home buyers. And listen, when the trade up sellers hit the market, it's not going to be like a surge of inventory because they're also going to buy a house and take one off the market. It's these new families, right, that don't own a home that are going to hit the market and reduce inventory even more. And that's what's going to drive prices up. So if you're a real estate agent, you're thinking, this is a struggling hard time right now. I want you to think about the future and how this is a golden opportunity right now to expand your influence in the market. The more people that know who you are, the, the, the more deals you're going to do. The number one reason why people choose a real estate agent, if you ask any buyer or seller at the end of the deal, the most common answer is going to be what? Go ahead and put it in the comments. What the most common answer is when you ask a buyer or seller, what, what, how did they pick their real estate agent? And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's that, oh, I knew somebody. I had a friend of the business or I was referred by someone who had a friend of the business. It's all going to come down to how many friends can you create in the market? And there's a big difference because people get in the, in the business and they think, I'm, a, I'm great at making friends. I'm awesome at making friends. I can make friends all day long. But there's a big difference in making friends you know, at the bookstore, at the ball field, at work. There's a big difference in that in creating a business friendship, creating a friendship and a bond with somebody who may do business with you for the rest of your life. There's a big difference in that. And people are they're, – they're, you know, new agents especially come in and they're just thinking, oh, this is going to be easy. I'm great at making friends. I like people. I like talking. I'm, I'm good at this. But there's a big difference when you throw in the fact that you're trying to win this person over, not just as a friend. Man, the people have, you know, tens and 20 and 30 and 40 friends, even hundreds of acquaintances, right? But how do you become the one friend that they say, oh, this is the friend that I'm going to do business with. I'm going to trust this person with my home, with my investment property. See, that's a whole different level. And that's the cookie that you got. That, 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 that's, that's the one you got to crack right there. So let's dive in here. The three reasons why real estate agents are so broke. Well, the first reason is, is that most people growing up having jobs, they start out as a W-2, okay? Which means that they just show up, okay? They just show up and they get paid regardless of their production levels, okay? But when you, but when you get into real estate, Okay, now you're on what's called a 1099, right? Now you're an independent contractor. Over here, you're an employee. So when you're an independent contractor, okay, now you don't get paid for just showing up. Now you only get paid for production and the level of your production. So a lot of people who, you know, came into the business, and they were used to this W-2 life, okay? They get in to this 1099 world and it's a culture shock because they're used to just showing up and regardless of what happens, they get a paycheck. Not what's happening over here in this world. Not what's happening over here in this world at all. And so what happens is, is they don't know how to deal with it quick enough. They can't make the transition quick enough from W-2 to 1099 to, 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 to catch up with their bills because the bills come due every month. 
Okay. But it takes a lot longer than that to really, for most people, to realize what they got themselves into by switching from being an employee to a business owner. And their bills pile up too much. And before too long, they're basically forced financially into returning right back to being a double two, W2 uh, two employee so that they can pay their bills. Okay. And a few other things about being a business owner is expenses. See, now, now, now you've got you've got your expenses, you're right, you set your own hours. Um, you're your own boss. See, people aren't used to that. They're used to the W-2, somebody telling them when they need to be there, okay, and how long they need to be there for. Well, when you're on a boss, you don't have anybody telling you that. So you're dependent on yourself to, to, to tell yourself when you got to work, how long you got to work, what you got to do, and you got to pay for everything. You got all the expenses of being an agent, the licensing, your marketing, your broker fees, your CRMs. You got to probably buy some more clothes. You got gas money, driving buyers around and et cetera, right? MLS fees. You got all these expenses and you set your own hours. So most people get out of the W-2 world, right? They get out of W-2 world because they don't like having to be somewhere when they don't want to be there, basically. So, so, so they're like, I, I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to live this life. I want to be my own boss. That sounds amazing. Let's go be our own boss and set our own hours, right? Because I don't like the hours I'm working over here. So then they come to the, 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 the 1099 world. And what happens is, is the reason that they join 1099 is so that they don't have to abide by the, 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 the W-2 rules and world. And that's exactly what creates failure in the 1099 world. I'm going to tell you what my, what my second broker told me. Okay. I'm going to tell you what my second broker told me. He said, Ricky, he said, Ricky, if you treat real estate like a job a job he said it'll be the best paying job you ever had now ain't that ain't that some if you treat real estate like a job he said it'll be the best paying job that you ever had what did he mean by that he what he meant was Treat you 1099 like it's a W-2. What does that mean? It means show up at the same hours you would at a W-2, right? Stay busy the whole time like you would at a W-2, doing dollar productive activities, right? He's like, treat this like this, and this will be the best paying this you ever had in your life. And the thing about it was, is I was already doing that. Yeah, I don't know why he I think he just wanted to throw some wisdom on me. I think he just wanted to say say hey, you know, I got some wisdom in here, you know. And that's why he uh that's why he said that, but it's something that rang that rang true and it rang clear to me and it's something I've brought with me throughout my entire life. So this is the first thing I think agents run into is is they they don't realize what they're getting into with this whole uh, you're your own boss thing. And then the eight ball of bills coming in month after month piles up too too quick to you know too soon too fast, and before you know it, they got to do something else just to just to stay alive. The second reason why agents are broke uh, is because the illusion of The illusion of competition. The illusion of competition. Guys, I'm here to tell you right this second. Now, now, please get this. Please get this part right here. Competition does not exist. Now, let me tell you why. We said it earlier that the number one reason why somebody chooses a real estate agent, I mean, put in the comments, if you think there's another number one reason why somebody chooses a real estate agent other than they had a friend in the business, right? They had a friend that made them feel comfortable, right? That was able to get them to open up to them about what they want to do and why so that they could put together a plan, a customized you know, plan 
specifically for them and their situation to help them accomplish whatever it is they want to accomplish in a very professional way. That's why they choose the real estate agent that they choose. They had a friend in the business that's professional with a great reputation that does what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it every single time and that they trust. Okay. That's why they had a friend in the business. Now, what does that mean? It means that relationships are the number one, should be the number one objective to everything that you do. Okay. So my question to you is, right. And, 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 and like, keep in mind when I say relationships, I'm not talking about listings. Right. I'm not talking about deals. Right. I'm not talking about appointments. Right. I'm not talking about, you know, emails. Right. I'm not talking about anything except for developing relationships. OK. All right. Nothing else. Now, my question to you is, is. Is anything, can anything, can anybody stop you from creating as many relationships as you want in your market? Okay. Is there anything? Is there anybody like I, the number one agent in, 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 the, in the market who gets, let's just say they get 500 deals a year, or something like that, whatever. Can, are they stopping? They might win a, they might win a listing appointment over you. Okay, but do they stop you from creating as many relationships as you can get to and conversations that you can have? No, nothing does. Nobody does. And the more of these you have, the bigger your business is going to be. Therefore, competition doesn't exist because nobody and nothing can stop you from creating as many relationships as you want to. And you can create these relationships out of thin air. Guys, I don't know if you saw the, the live call session I did uh, this week. I set two listing appointments out of thin air. I, I found a builder building three uh, custom homes that I can go sell that are off market. And I took a client that was, you know, started out kind of rude to me and turned him into a lifelong client, right? You can watch all of this. You can watch all of this. Uh, I, I'll put the link in the description. I'll put it at the end of this video. At the end of this video, click on it and watch me do this. It's recorded right there for you. I can't imagine any agent Who's like, I, I want to do deals. Like, like, I just show me the way I want to do deals. Okay. Well, here's a video of me showing you exactly how to do deals. Oh no, no, I, I ain't gonna call nobody. I no heavens, no. I, w wait a minute. Like, I don't care what your lead gen is. I don't care what your lead gen is. You got to talk to them, right? Which brings me to my third reason, is is agents won't make calls all right and before you turn the video off saying oh yeah you just go okay well you you tell me something you tell me something better here's you right and here's the closing all right okay here's you right here all right and down here we got lead Gen, lead gen activities, okay? And the lead gen activities, let me do that in yellow. Lead gen activities are everything lead gen activity-wise, right? Like social media, Zillow leads, um, open houses, networking events, um, door knocking, direct mail, um, you know, whatever. Anything and everything you can think about, right? For you to get to the closings, you got to go down this road, and you got to do lead gen. It don't matter what your lead gen is. It could be Zillow leads. It could be social media, YouTube. It could be, you know, Google pay-per-click, you know, blogs, I, whatever, whatever, okay? But at the end of the day, you're, 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 you're going to come back to conversation, right? You can't, you can't go from here to here without going through conversations. You do your lead gen activities and then you got to talk to them. I don't care what it is. You got to talk to them. Okay? You got to talk to them. And then once you talk to them, then we're going to service the deal, right? So you 
you know, conversation and then you service the deal, which means like showing the property, writing the offers, negotiating, getting it under contract, dealing with the title company and the mortgage company and the inspectors and everybody that's involved, right? And getting it to the closing, right? And then we get to the closing, okay? This is the path of every single deal. Here's you, here's Lee Jin, here's the conversation you got to have, and here's the service in the deal, and here's the closing every single time, okay? So what I'm saying is, is where on this chart, okay, where on this windy road do you spend most of your time, money, and energy? I'll tell you what it is. Matter of fact, put in the comments right now. What, where on this windy road, okay, do you feel like most of the time, money, and energy is spent, okay? In my opinion, it's right here. The lead gen activities, right? Because people are spending so much time making video, which is great. I want you to do it. You better be doing it, right? Hear, hear the words that I'm saying. You better be making videos, okay? Um, you know, they spend a lot of money on Zillow leads, They, uh, they spend a lot of time doing open houses, okay? They spend a lot of money on just leads, buyer leads of any source. They're paying 35% to, 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 to get buyer leads. Um, what else are they doing? You know, spending time going to networking events and on social media, okay? All these things, when you get the lead, you got to talk to them. You can't get around this part. So for me, this is just me. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna spend all the time, money, and energy to do vi video and spend money on Zillow and and all this stuff, do open houses, all to come right back to the same place anyway. Why don't I just take the shortcut and go straight from me to conversations? Short cut. Because the leads that I call. Right? I've been making calls for the last three weeks. I'll be making calls this Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Show up. I'll be here live on YouTube. Show up. Watch me do it again. I'll have more leads, and every single person I call is better, better quality than any of, the, any of these leads. Why? They own the property I want to sell. Like when I get a lead off of, uh, off of YouTube, that's a buyer. It's a first-time home buyer ready to run me all around town. Why would I do this? I want to do this, but I'm going to do this as a secondary, right? It's not my primary. I know I can create deals out of thin air if I just have conversations. So you can run, but you can't hide, right? This is the problem. Agents won't make calls. But guess what? You're in sales. You are in sales. And in sales, your job is to help people. It's not to it's not to con people. It's not to trick people. It's not to do anything weird. You're here to service people, to serve people, to help people, right? There's, there's nothing about what you do that's, that, that should be weird or, you, or make you feel uncomfortable. You should be, after you watch that video, I, I don't understand why people aren't running to get Red X and load up the dialer and just start talking to leads because all you want is a bunch of leads. That's all you want. So I'm giving them to you for a penny a piece. RedX.com backslash Ricky. Get the discount. Get Geoleads Plus. Get Expireds Plus. And get, a, get the multi-line dialer and get to work. Because I'm not only telling you how to do this. I'm showing you every week. And this is not talk. This is not theory. This is what I do. And so, <laughs> like, you can create as many deals as you want and literally have the leads right now instead of spending all this time, money, and energy just to get right back to the same spot, okay? So that's the three reasons why real estate agents are broke. They are coming from a W-2 world, number one. They believe in the illusion of competition that doesn't exist whatsoever, and they won't make calls. This is why they're broke right here. And I'm going to tell you the, the, the one thing you can do to go out there and absolutely crush it. Okay. I'm going to tell you. You ready? Here it is. Get out of your own way. 
because you are the only person in the way of you and anything you want. There's so much business right in front of you right this second. You just won't get it. Like you can't see it. It's just like it's an imaginary thing for you or something. I don't know if it has an imaginary cloak or you're just like you're blind or you you just you're ignoring it. It's like talk to the hand. I don't want to see you deal. You know, don't get away from me. You know, don't <laughs> you got some money for me? Uh, like way I used to know this guy. And every time that we we'd, we'd uh, try to pay him, like he literally give us his, give us our money back. <laughs> like, like, I don't want your money kind of thing. And that's what that's what a lot of you guys remind me of. Like, oh, I don't want I don't want a deal. Don't give me a deal today. So anyway, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go watch this video right now. Watch me set two listing appointments and then shut YouTube down. Go get Red X and start doing this yourself. You got this. I believe in you. God bless. I'll see you on the next video.